Hey, it's Brian Mudd. This is my cheat sheet for Tuesday, October 16th. The impact of the second presidential debate. What will it be? Okay, so historically, the first presidential debate is by far the most important. 75% of people who were undecided prior to the debates that said they made a decision based upon debates, historically, 75% of the time, it is based upon the first debate. That being said, the second presidential debate isn't without a certain level of importance. If we go back over the past 30 years, for example, what we see is that the biggest increase anybody has been able to gain has been about two points in the polls. Or, to put it another way, the biggest loss that somebody has taken has been about two points. And that was 20 years ago in the second presidential debate between Bill Clinton and George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, that was the one where infamously uh, George Bush ended up looking at his Time is it? Jeez, we're still here. Watch twice during the debate. And perhaps based upon that level of, of disinterest in the debate itself, uh, George Bush lost two points in the head-to-head -head point average against Bill Clinton. Usually, if you're taking a look at two points or less uh, based upon a debate outcome, it hasn't meant much. You know, for example, two points wouldn't have changed anything in 2008. It wouldn't have changed anything in 2004. If you go back, there really haven't been races in the modern polling age that a two-point swing from a second presidential debate would end up making that big of a difference. And most of the time, uh, they've been deemed to be closer to draws, so there's really no change in the polls afterward. But this time is different. Let's say that there is a two-point swing in the polls based upon tonight, uh, tonight's debate. That could be enough to swing the election. Right now, Mitt Romney does lead an aggregate of all polling averages, but by less than one point over President Obama. That means that it wouldn't take much of a convincing win by either side for Mitt Romney to either have a decisive margin of victory that he's staring at or for President Obama to become the favorite again. So make no mistake, while second debates typically aren't all that important, this race is currently so close that this debate is extremely important. In fact, perhaps the most important second debate in the polling age. All right, um, reverse mortgages. Would you believe that the highest level of default, in fact, a record level of default, is taking place on that particular mortgage product, the reverse mortgage? When you see the commercials sometimes on TV, how could it be? I mean, this is a great thing. You get to use your home's equity uh, for retirement income, get it, live comfortably, pay all your bills. Look, I've not been a big fan of reverse mortgages right along for one very important reason. It's a loan, and if something doesn't go according to plan, the people who are using reverse mortgages are those that have the least financial flexibility oftentimes to be able to deal with the adversity. Reverse mortgages can be great if everything goes according to plan and you even die according to schedule. But because it is a loan, you can default. And because you can default and it is a loan, your home could potentially even be repossessed. And people are losing their homes now as a result of this. All told, 9.7% of all reverse mortgages are currently in default. And a lot of this has to do with people demographically just living longer, perhaps, than they thought. You've got to know exactly what you're doing before you get into reverse mortgage. It's the saddest thing in the world to have people who are no longer able to work, that have run out of money, and now are in default and potentially could lose their home. That's no way to go out in this world. All right, uh, Social Security, uh, real quick on this one. This one. I found this to be interesting. Common misconception about Social Security a credited tip from CBS News on this one. The biggest mistake that people are making when assessing Social Security this day uh, in age is knowing exactly how uh, your payment is calculated based upon your earnings. For example, a lot of people think that it's based upon the most recent years of earnings before you go into retirement and Social Security. That's not entirely the case. What Social Security is based upon is a 35-year working average. So if you have 35 years in the workforce, It'll take your highest earning years within 35 and average it out for your Social Security payment. If you haven't worked 35 years, zeros are added for all the years leading up to 35 that you didn't work, which dramatically brings down your Social Security earnings rate. And if you have worked for more than 35, then they do take just the highest earning years. I've got all that information on my fiscal cheat sheet and plenty more, including hiring from Amazon. That is the cheat sheet for, for today. Enjoy yours. We shall see you tomorrow.